So we made our way to North Carolina finally, and now we are grounded due to the issue with the generator. We found out a couple weeks ago that our generator was overheating for just no particular reason to stop working. Uh, turns out uh, that the dry belt or cooling belt was gone bad, and the way the generator is designed, it has to be dropped, taken out, kind of semi disassembled and uh, to get to the belt which is kind of labor intensive it takes about four hours on average I was told to to take the belt out and replace it so we'll do a couple of other preventive maintenance things as well now just sitting here they had to take out the uh, front bumper which is really a slide where generator sits on because it weighs about 800 pounds so it's impossible to to get it out any other way so we're kind of like noseless here uh, everything else of course works we just have to take care of that because the uh, generator kind of is important so I guess we'll sit here a few days and uh, wait for the parts to come in and then uh, see what uh, what the labor looks like so how long will it take well we were told it took a four hours to take the generator out so we figured well probably took four hours to put it back together yeah more or less this is all a matter of plus minus an hour or two and I would guess that uh, I probably taken uh, anywhere from two to four hours to replace those parts. So altogether, I'm looking at 12 hours labor cost. I have read on different sites people who had a similar problem. Their cost was between two and a half to three thousand dollars. My bill turned out to be over six thousand. Initially, it was about four hundred dollars at the first stop in Colorado to diagnose the problem. We decided not to pursue and the second bill was shockingly high it was actually twice what I expected and that what makes me kind of angry and I'm still I'm still dealing with it because I felt like I was overcharged I wanted to say that everybody was very nice very professional at the place that we dealt with that did the that did the service work every same people seemed to be experienced they seemed to know what they were doing uh, on my billing, I have a breakdown for every part that was replaced, cost of it, times one, times six, whatever number of parts were. On the labor side, I had 4700 plus dollar in labor. There was no itemizing how many hours. As a matter of fact, uh, hourly rate wasn't even stated anywhere. I overheard the conversation that the hourly rate was $197, but I I don't know that. I thought that was a requirement that the, the repair centers have to have a labor displayed, labor cost charge, but I, I didn't see that. So so I'm assuming uh, that it, if that's the $197, so I divided 4,700 plus by, let's say 200, so that comes up to about, about 24 hours. So, to me, it is obvious, or I feel, I was charged for 24 hours of labor. Which would be impossible because this is our home, we live in it, and they were nice enough to, whenever they were doing something, we were parked right outside, we were told that, you know, something was happening. So, 24 hours is a, 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 a technician working on it three full days, eight hour shifts, which was not the case. So no, there was no 24 hours in. So what are the lessons that I've learned? Well, this is what I recommend for anybody that is considering or has a unit that is uh, more than 12, 14 years old. I would suggest preventive maintenance. If you think you're gonna keep your motor home a new generator for the next couple of years it's good thing to shop around if you have a mechanic a diesel mechanic or generator someone with experience that you can trust I would take it before the belt goes because if you think about it belt is made out of what rubber synthetic some thread and whatnot in it it's it's gonna go 12, 15, 17 years is old. And it's gonna crack and it's, like I said, expense of it. When you have to take it somewhere you don't know, you're gonna pay double. If you can do the work yourself, do it preventively before things go bad. 
but even if you have to take it to the service center, number one, it's an on-on generator, which means Cummins. You don't have to take it there because just like if you bought a Toyota and your Toyota is 15 years old, you don't need to take it back to a Toyota dealer and pay their hourly. You can work with any mechanic because unless the warranty is involved, you don't need to take it to the manufacturer. You can take it to anybody that that you trust or, or has a good reputation. So in order to save money, that will be that will be one way to do it. Do it preventively. I know it's expensive, but if you can get away with $2,500, $3,000, it's a lot cheaper than just something, just something to keep in mind. Secondly, if you take it to the dealer or service place, Get an estimate, but also ask them, will you be getting annual uh, hourly spec sheet? In other words, something, a record, what technician was doing and how long. Don't just take their word in a labor 4,700. That's like, for what? How many hours? What did you do? It is rare to find a service place that actually provides you with the detail record what I did. I'm going to recommend the place, so this is just not something I've noticed in my records. The, the motorhome was previously, at some point, was owned in Michigan. Holland, Michigan. There was an RV place, and the owner at the time has a detailed record of every time they took it to get either something fixed, replaced, or whatever. There was a breakdown for every part, for every amount of time that technicians spend checking investigating this problem that problem the other problem and then when you saw the final bill uh, it could be as high as twelve thousand dollars you kind of knew oh okay they did i mean you can you could tell what was done i one of the things i really hate is when you pay for something it's a lump sum and there is no breakdown what anything is i think the two hundred dollars an hour hourly wage is high enough but okay if i'm paying someone who knows more than I do, okay, it's like a medicine. You pay for someone who has an education and experience of doing some stuff. So I understand that's fair. But don't charge me for twice the amount of hours that you spend on something without telling me that or, or somehow negotiating whatever. So that was my, so that was my experience. I, I felt we were overpaid, overcharged, but that's what, that's what the story is. So get your estimates in writing but also ask him to get hourly sheet of who did what and how long it took because you're gonna get overcharged so we took the generator to a service place it was actually distribution center for Cummins uh, this is an on on generator but they're owned by Cummins since uh, about 2005 so that's uh, that's a place to go to so this is our 12 and a half kilowatt quiet diesel generator with about 1100 hours, uh, which is considered about third, third used uh, expectancy, life expectancy of these is about three, up to 5,000 hours. Generators are measured in hours, not, not, not in mileage. So is this is repair that you should attempt to do it yourself or is this something you need to take it to a certified dealer or, or mechanic? Well, I would say for 5% of you, you may be able to do this. There are a couple of main things that you need to do. First, you need to be mechanically inclined to do such a thing, which in our case involves removing, removing the front bumper, which is just a matter, it's a pretty straightforward process. There's a bunch of bolts you have to remove, but so the front, the front bumper comes out. You open your slide as much as it comes out and then you disconnect the generator and need to have a forklift. Forklift does the lifting because the generator weighs about 800 pounds. And then you can actually get to the belt or anything else for that matter because that is stuff that is all built at the back end of the generator and you cannot get to it until you take this out. It's going to be a very expensive way to replace the belt. It's not like in your car, which you pop the hood, you see the belt, you go like, oh, okay, I can do this. But this is a little bit more involved. As we were told, it took about four hours to 
take the generator out and diagnose what was wrong with it and um, order parts necessary for replacement. The main parts that we need to get was uh, the belt belt assembly, which is about three to four hundred dollars uh, belt upgrade. Uh, and we thought it would be a good idea to replace some other parts that may go wrong, mainly uh, fuel pump, uh, thermostat, uh, flush the cooling system and get the new hoses in as well. This is all relatively inexpensive considering how much it takes, how much labor is involved to get to it. So we thought it would be a good, uh, what we call 1,000 hour service. Anyway, I'm glad to be back in business. Generator is working well. Uh, we have uh, now, I guess, a one-year parts and labor warranty. So at least for next year, we don't have to worry about issue with it. But but it was an expensive repair. And uh, if I could save you, if I saved you any money, or if this video helped you in any way, I appreciate you subscribe to our channel. And I uh, hope to see you down down on the road. Take care.